I have always had a fascination with models and dioramas. Model railways are especially captivating because they are actually working, moving simulations. I don't think I need to go on about how amazing some of the model work in the fandom is. I had a model railroad at my house, but I had to put it away when I left for college. Now I'm in a small studio apartment, and obviously building a huge layout would be quite impractical, especially if I have to keep moving. But during the various quarantines and lockdowns, I said, screw it, I'll try to build one with the best I have. I originally planned to do a full vlog series of me building the small N-scale layout in my apartment, but with all the schoolwork, I only got one thing done so far, this cliff face. So for a start, I'll just show you guys how I made this cliff face that can be easily moved around, whether for layouts or shooting videos. Here are the various materials I used. One major piece of advice I can give when making layouts is that you don't need to rely entirely on specially made products, like Woodland Scenics. If you can use something else, then by all means do it. It will save you money. For example, I make my own trees from garden twigs, which I'll probably show in another video. Even rock molds can probably be made from tin foil. Anyway, let's get started. The cliff will be made of foam, with two pieces glued together. Any sturdy foam should work. I got a sheet of craft foam from Blick Art Materials just down the street from my apartment. I measured it to fit the baseboard I had bought, which, again, I'll go into in another video. I cut the foam using this craft hobby knife. Now here comes the fun part. I then used this first piece to trace the second piece, cut that, and then glued them together as best as I could. Obviously, as you can see, my cuts are far from uniform, but that doesn't really matter. You can sand the foam down to create a somewhat straight edge. Now for the rocks. I just used simple molds I got from Woodland Scenics and Plaster of Paris. My advice to make the plaster nice and smooth is to pour the water in the plaster, but wait a few minutes before stirring. This gives the water time to seep fully into the plaster so you don't get a chunky mix. Then you just pour the mix into the molds and wait for them to dry. After they were fully dry, which I'd probably give about one day, I popped the rocks out and glued them onto the foam. The glue I used was simple Gorilla Wood Glue, which is strong but doesn't eat the foam. Don't worry about the gaps, because the next step will address those. After the glue had fully dried, I made another mix of plaster and water. This time, I applied the plaster to the gaps and tried my best to cover as much of the foam as I could. By doing this, it makes the rocks look more natural as if they are part of a cliff rather than just pasted on. I let that dry fully for a few days, then it was time for paint. Now the paint I use is a Woodland Scenics Earth Color, but you could probably use any sort of paint. The Woodland Scenics paint is more realistic, but it is pricey. My bottle was about $10, so this was just my personal choice. This paint is more loosely mixed, so it creates realistic variations in color on the rocks. I applied many coats, filling in as many gaps as I could, which was actually pretty difficult. I've noticed that plaster does not lend itself well to painting, especially on a rough surface like this. You need lots and lots of coats to get it in. I also painted the top foam where I will be putting turf grass. Painting the ground brown before applying grass gives it a much more realistic look than just painting it green, because it simulates the dirt at the bottom. Now the way most modelers use to apply grass is to spray Woodland Scenics Scenic Cement Glue on the surface and then shake the grass onto it before applying another layer of it. I do this too, but I like to use a stronger spray like Elmer's or Tacky Spray to keep the grass on. I do that first before shaking the grass on. I then spray the Scenic Cement on the grass after it is dried. The Scenic Cement helps bond the grass particles together to create a hard surface, like with sandpaper. Now the final step is to add the shrubs. As I was moving back to California for the summer in the next few days, for now I'll just be using simple shrubs, but eventually I'll put in more stuff like moss. But I did add clump foliage. The Woodland Scenics clump foliage is pretty realistic, so I recommend you buy it. I got quite a big bag of it. You can use any glue for this. I just used a generic Elmer's glue bottle. 
In this step, I filled in all the gaps left over between the rocks, trying to hide the blue foam spot still visible. And here is the somewhat final product. I'll be adding trees and gravel later on, so keep on the lookout for more vlogs. But here you have a very basic scenery backdrop that can be easily moved around. You don't have to take your toys outside if you want to film them, you can just film them right in front of this. Keep on the lookout for more of these vlogs and my visit to the Tallyclin Railway in July. Thanks for watching.